So I've been looking at Jamie's, Gus Nemo's images over at Bryce Talk Forum at Das 3 d uh, He's done some interesting abstract images and thought I'd, I'd have a go at that too. So we'll have a go at doing some abstract images, but use it as a basis to introduce some ideas about bump mapping and reflection correction, which is probably a largely misunderstood uh, feature in Bryce. And also to show you what you can do with this uh, product created by Horror and myself to create some interesting distortions within your abstract image. So I'm going to keep things simple in terms of what we're introducing in the scene. It's just going to have a few infinite planes. We're going to make a box out of infinite planes. Now, you might reasonably ask, why not just use a box? Because we've got one here. But this is going to allow us some control over the scaling of the material without having to go into the material lab. So we'll start off by creating our material on this one infinite plane. So I'll select the infinite plane, go into the material lab, and I'm going to use a perfectly reflecting surface and only a bit of diffuse. OK, and we're going to need something to control the bump, because I'm going to use bump for this effect with the mirror to create our abstract effect. Now, you could use all kinds of different bump materials, and we're going to use quite a lot of bump. In fact, we're going to use a really large amount of bump, and that's going to help us explore the reflection correction. But as I was saying, you can use any texture for this, but I'm going to choose one to create a particular effect. So hold the shift key down and click on the name to go into the texture library, and then go to basic. So this is what you get when from Bryce. So there's no problem there, you should all have this. Select this one here, which is basic distant origin. And I need to make some corrections in this so it's going to work for us. We need it to be object space mapped. I'm just going to check the scale of this and make sure it's not zero, because if it was zero, then that might affect the way it might. But as long as it's above zero, probably somewhere in the 100 range would be helpful in terms of scaling, then it doesn't need to be particularly accurate because we're going to scale the infinite planes. Because because this is object space mapped, we can scale the planes and that way we can scale the material instead of having to go back into the transformation tools all the time to achieve that effect. I'm going to use actual selection so we can see the effect of this on the infinite plane and you can see there's no effect yet so I'll go in the deep texture editor and make a few modifications if you click on each of these gel colored blobs it'll open the noise phase and filter dialogues we only need this component so just click on one to get rid of the second component we will need a bump output so you can see there's a bit of effect from bump there in fact if you turn these other two off temporarily We'll actually only need colour output as well as bump, so don't worry about alpha. You can see the effect of the bump. Now, these uh, harsh transitions between the slope and the horizontal in the filter are not going to be very helpful for bump, because of the way bump works, it's better to have some smooth transitions. So we'll go to smooth clip instead of using clip. Now we can see we've got some transitions there, but this is still a bit harsh. So what I'll do is I'll reset this filter, and then I'm aiming to increase the slope and peak so that roughly speaking I'm um, just aiming for, I've got a picture in my mind of how I want it but sometimes using these filters can be a bit fiddly so I increase the amplitude of A and then dial B back so we've got this sort of pattern which corresponds to this pattern here and you can see we've got white area transition to through this blue color and then this blue area which is more or less where I was aiming for the other thing I need to modify is the um, whether it's 2D or 3D. As it happens, because of the orientation of this texture, if we have it on 2D, it's just going to appear as a stripe on the infinite plane. I want it to appear as like um, a raindrop blob. So hopefully now that's all set up for us and we can have a look outside here. Like you see, I was saying now how it's like, like sort of just a, a dimple or like where a raindrop's hit in some water. And I'm going to use. Um, diffuse color from this a bit off. I'm going to use some specular from this, so it's going to take the specular from, from this and the specular halo. Oh, I hit the wrong blob there, but both those need to be in. Uh, we want some specularity. We've got bump, anisotropic effect, and I'm going to drive it by the color. Now, you see that red tint there? Uh, that's handy that that's appeared because it allows me to draw your attention to something. The specular halo values are particularly sensitive when they're getting up to full value. So if we look in here, that may look white, but if I hold the Alt key down and click on this color swatch, you'll see that it's got slightly more red. 
and within the range between 240 and 255 the specular halo becomes particularly sensitive to values so that can that if we turn that right up you'd have a very extreme effect uh, with the specular halo which starts to create this uh, tune effect which is covered in other videos so just make sure it doesn't go to full value but you can have it set fairly high and then when I return back here you can see there's a strong red cast and that's only appearing through the specular channel and it, it won't be in the diffuse so you can you can offset these colors quite nicely using that effect so that's set up my at material for now and and hopefully we won't have to go back in here although I may be overcooking it a bit with the specularity so I'll drop that so there we go 10 diffusion 40 specularity um, large bump value that has to be typed in you can't get that with the slider slider only goes up to 100 but if you uh, click on the dialog there and type in you can get it to a maximum value which is uh, going to help later on just to explain something objects based mapped I think we're ready to go so now we'll just have a quick look at this so that's got that effect that's great okay now I need to make a box out of these infinite planes and I also need to point out I'll just do control C and control V and slide the infinite plane up that the bump will be sided so this will be the re will be the reverse of that because it's on the underside of the infinite plane so what I need to do is flip the plane over so I can have symmetry between these two bump effects so that's great now select both those and group them then control C control V and rotate them in the X direction so now we've got four sides on our box and then control C control V and rotate them in the Y direction hold the shift key down to do it in discrete steps and that gives us our box okay and now we select all those group them and modify them so that origin is at the world origin and now I'll modify the camera's world origin so that true is also at the origin so that the, we're exactly in the middle of this box and this is handy because when we bring in our um, where is he where is he uh, this uh, lens that will also enter at the world origin which will be convenient for us just, rem just remember to bolt it on so um, we've got this group of groups let's see we need to select the entire group so that's the entire group and you'll just ungroup that and then group that and see if we can see anything at all it's very faint I'm going to widen the f actually I'm going to show you what you can see first of all so what I'll do see that's scaling the box um, the, the pattern on the sides of the box but not the box itself the the little bit you can see is as a result of haze so if we bring more haze in you'll be able to see things occurring we're not going to use haze for this effect but I just want to show you what we've got so far and uh, in, with this wide field of view you can see the effect of having this particular wide field of view effect uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to now bring in my wide angle lens which will put an extra twist on things so the extreme wide angle lens I'll load that in and I'll make sure as it's selected go to the attributes and linking and link it to the perspective cam which means it will remain perpetually bolted onto the front so we can see even more of the scene and it's got some interesting distortions on it as I said though I'm not going to use the haze to show this pattern up uh, this is what's occurring in the in the other video um, with the starburst effect it's the the haze that's lighting it so if I hold the alt key down and click on the haze uh, thumbnail there and the fog thumbnail just to be certain that gets rid of those effects and at this point go into the sky lab and turn off the shadows what this has the effect of doing is allowing the sun to enter the box and interact with the diffuse and specular of the material and this uh, should now be lighting our effect up so at this point I've got the option right, if I can get hold of my infinite planes just select infinite plane here of, of scaling the effect of these these discs just by changing the scale of my infinite plane so I can grow them or shrink them it might not be clear quite what's happening there so in this view you can see more of that effect there so there we go that's uh, it's quite dramatically changed you see I want a little bit of that red included so I'll shrink that back down now at the moment where the bump pattern is becoming extreme in other words it's the bump is so steep that our view of the plane is the bumps interpreted as actually passing off through the back uh, in an impossible way that creates a different effect from if we introduce this reflection correction what this ha does is mean it means that when the bumps become so steep that it's become impossible the uh, 
the normal that's been generated is so steep that it's actually passing our reflection off on through the surface, which can't possibly happen in real life, but it can because bumps are an illusory effect created on top of the material geometry. Then uh, reflection correction just turns it back into a plane mirror, which means if we apply that now, we should see a radical difference in our um, in our pattern that we've generated. So that's our pattern. Uh, where we've got a lot of reflection, it's become quite noisy. So I'm probably going to have to explore using um, like high quality anti-aliasing, like fine art anti-aliasing. But I'm just going to uh, play a bit more with this scaling. See if we bring a bit more red in from that edge to balance things out. And the other thing to note is that you can change the appearance quite a bit by moving the sun around because that's what's stimulating the effect here. So it, if you want things very symmetrical, for example, which can be nice, then you can place the sun directly overhead. And you can do that very accurately by, say, doing it in this dialogue in this Skylab. So that's an option there. So it looks a bit like sort of stained glass windows. And because I've bolted the lens to the front of the camera, when when I did that uh, earlier, I can now shift my camera around and and change the focus of this. So I could point my camera straight up, and then this this dark area, that's the, the equator. So this is actually sort of looking behind us. So it depends which particular effect you're wanting to go for, whether it's highly symmetrical or something asymmetrical. So you can just uh, roam around and have a look and experiment with the lighting. So. Okay, quite quite like that, but uh, you know, there's, there's loads of options. It's a bit hard to choose with uh, abstract. So let, let's say that's going to be our choice. With, as I was saying, the, there's the noise issue, and there's also the consideration that we've got lots of reflections occurring. They eventually run out and uh, stop reflecting at the maximum ray depth and return black. So if I increase this value, say I double it, then we'll have more reflections between the mirrors, and then you'll have more complexity and more light. So that's sort of had the effect of lightening it, the uh, the scene somewhat. I'll just move it around. The uh, the preview here, uh, under under normal circumstances, fast fast preview only respects uh, a maximum ray depth of three. Uh, but if you want it to do the lot, then accurate rendering, and then you'll you'll have a better guide as to what you're getting. But it will take a little bit longer to render there. So at the moment it's looking a bit bright, and obviously it's going to take longer the more reflections you have. So you can try raising and lowering the maximum ray depth to get to either more or less contrast. So I want it to be fully dark somewhere and to be quite bright in other places going to white. So I seem to have achieved that here. The final thing to do is look at our render options, go for super fine art anti-aliasing and we can say 64 rays per pixel will probably be good enough. There might be a bit of noise but we'll we'll give that a go and have a look here. That doesn't look too bad, so I'll just give that a quick render and um, pause the video. Let's see how long it's going to take. Oh, 10 minutes, and we'll see how that looks at the end of it. There then is the uh, final render. It's uh, I think it's turned out okay. I'm never really that sure about abstracts because it's hard to measure it against anything. I mean, when you're creating something that's supposed to look realistic, then you can easily say whether you've achieved what you set out to do, but with an abstract, you're in an area where it's very hard to be critical. But I think this is quite an, an interesting method. I think it's fairly easy to do, so I hope you'll give it a go in your own renders and that you enjoyed watching this tutorial.